Okay, now that we've got all of our disks added in our virtual SAN, let's go ahead and mount them on the servers. So we're going to refer back to this a couple times because honestly, I don't ever remember what I put with what. So let's go over here to node one. Let's go to all servers. Nope, not all servers. Let's go to file and storage and then disks. And you'll see that we have all of these guys offline and we have to bring them online. I'm going to start in somewhat of a methodic pattern if I can. And I'm going to start with the one gigs. I'm going to do the quorum and then the DTC and I'm going to kind of work my way up from there. So I'm going to right click and say bring online. Now I've got to create a volume. There we go. Just accept most of the defaults. I'm going to accept this as an E drive right now. I'm going to show you how to how to change your drive layers later. The unit size is going to be default. There's nothing wrong with that. We're going to do quorum here. I like to name my disks and tell it to create. It'll only be a couple more seconds. There we go. Done. Now let's do the other one gig right here. This is going to be DTC, right? Create a volume for it. F will be just fine for now. Again, we'll call it DTC. Next, and create. And that again should only be a couple more seconds. Perfect. Good. Now we've got those out of the way. Let's go on to the 20 gig. And I don't remember which one the 20 gig was. I told you I was bad at this. And it turns out that it's the system DBs. There we go. So we've got the 20 gig. Let's bring it online. Let's create our volume. Now for this one, we are going to change the size to 64K because it's going to be a SQL drive. And we'll call it system DBs and create. Again, it should happen fairly fast. There we go. Now we're going to move to the 5 gig, and I don't remember what that is either. So the 5 gig is going to be the user logs, okay? So right click, bring online. There we go. Next. Yes. Next. H is fine. Again, 64K since it's going to actually house SQL data user logs and create just a couple more seconds here perfect and next we've got this 10 gig let's do that 10 gig real quick uh, 10 gig can be user DBs let's do that one so let's right click create now we're gonna create our volume next next Yes. Next. That's fine. Again, 64K. Call it user DBs. And create. I can't remember if I called it user DBs or user data, but it's the same thing. There we are. That's done. And what do we have next? We have another offline right here for 10 gigs. That's probably the backup drive, right? There we go, backup at 10 gigs. So let's bring it online. There we go. And we'll leave that as the default as well. And we'll call that backups. And create couple more seconds it should be done there we go okay so now I think we have all of our disks online yep I can see all of our disks online here now we get to go create the cluster so I'm gonna come back in oops I was already in there wasn't I so I'm gonna to go to tools FCM as soon as it comes up there we go I can validate the configuration now but it'll do it as part of the cluster create so let's go ahead and do this 
next, enter the server name, SQL node one, there we go, SQL node two. These are the nodes that are gonna be in the cluster. Next. So this is telling you that you have to perform a validation. It won't let you move forward until you A, perform a validation, and B, everything comes up without red on it. So it'll either be green or yellow, and yellow is just a warning, right? We'll come up next, run all the tests, absolutely. Click next, and now we wait. Now, while we wait, I just wanted to discuss this validation report here for a second, because not only is it extremely important, but it's also required. It performs exhaustive tests on your different on your hardware config, and don't take this lightly, because I have seen clusters that have had dozens of disks added to them and taken two days to perform the validation report. So this can take a very long time. Microsoft is not really concerned with this being a rushed process or with it happening in a timely manner. So, you know, just plan for that. If you've got dozens of really large disks, plan on it taking a while. I've seen it take anywhere from, you know, 10 minutes to two and three days. It's, it can run for a very long time. The, the bigger your setup, the longer it's gonna run but you also can't install SQL unless you have a valid cluster report either. So, you know, this is 100% necessary. This is clearly gonna take a while, so I'm gonna pause and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, the report is finished. That took about seven minutes, give or take. Let's go ahead and look at the results here. We've got all greens, except for one yellow on networking communication. I'll talk about that in a second but our storage is all green, our system configuration is all green, everything's beautiful. Now the reason why we have this network communication warning is because we don't have two NICs. Typically what you do is you have one public NIC for client server communications, right, for public communications, and then a private NIC over there for the heartbeat communications. We don't have that. The cluster will still work just fine without it, and for our purposes, this is gonna be just fine. But most of the time in production, what you'll see is you'll see two different networks under there. You'll, you'll see your NICs on two, different, uh, on two different networks, one on a public network and one on a private network. But like I said, that's not really important here. So I'll click Finish. Now, since we started this through the cluster wizard, through the, the cluster create wizard, it puts us right back into the cluster create wizard. So what are we going to call our cluster name? Oh, let's get creative again and let's call it Win Cluster. You'll quite often find much more creative names in enterprises. Usually what happens is they'll put together some kind of naming convention and they'll put Clust in there or CL in there, something that lets you know that it's the Windows cluster name. But right now we're just going to do Win Cluster. So I think the last IP we use, let's see, we have one, two, three boxes online so far, so this must be number four. And this has to have its own cluster. Here, let's go, let's go back here. This has to have its own IP address, simply because it's gonna have a computer account created for it and an entry in DNS. That's how the traffic gets routed to this box. I'm gonna show you that a little bit later when the cluster gets built and probably after we install SQL as well. But just know that you have to have an IP address for the win cluster name, because it's a virtual name for the cluster. And you're also gonna to have to have a separate one for the SQL virtual name as well. And I hope all of this is gonna be, become a little bit more clear. I'm gonna show you around in AD and DNS a little bit after we're done with the SQL install and try to explain to you a little bit and show you how this is put together. And I think it's gonna, and I think it's gonna become a lot more clear. Okay, next. Add all available storage to the cluster, absolutely. And this really shouldn't take that long. So I think we'll ride this one out on film. There we go. Our cluster is created. Click finish. And we should be able to come in here and view all of our cluster storage. There we are, we got our disks there. All of them are online. Perfect, they're online on node two, absolutely. And we've got DTC is J, systems are F, 
user db is our g, h, and so on and so on, right? There's our quorum on e. Absolutely perfect. Now, in most shops I've been in, this is the state in which the Windows guys will hand over the cluster to you for the SQL install. You'll have a pool of disks here that they've allocated to the cluster. They haven't bothered renaming anything. They haven't bothered changing the drive letters to what you want. Maybe they did. Sometimes they'll give you the drive letters right. But for the most part, this is where the DBA picks up. I've been in a couple shops where we're expected to do more of it, or maybe even all of it, but that's really not very common, especially anymore with such a strong separation of duties that we see in a, a lot of the larger enterprises, right? So chances are, if you're asked to install a cluster, they'll give you a Windows setup, they'll give you the, the cluster already built with the disks already added, and you'll be golden. And this is where you will pick up right here. You'll come in here to Cluster Manager, and you'll start doing your config for your databases. Now, what config do you need to do? Well, as it stands, officially there's nothing you need to do but there are some things i like to do first and foremost i like to rename my disks to something a little bit friendlier so that i can see what i'm looking at i don't like to have to click on every single one of these to find out which disk i'm looking for so let's go ahead and rename these guys to something a little bit more friendly so we've got backups here and right now it is the i drive well i don't want that to be the i drive i want that to be Oh, I don't know. Let's make backup something else, right? So I can change the drive letter down here and let's change it to Z. We'll just Z for backups, right? So now that I'm here, I can double click on this guy and instead of cluster disk one, let's call him backups. Let's call him, actually, let's call him Z dash backups. That way I can tell what the drive letter is and I can tell what its function is. Let's go to disk two. That's the quorum. I think quorum should always be Q. I just like that symmetry. So let's change this to Q. And let's make this Q dash quorum. There we go. And disk three is user logs H. Oh, let's make it L for logs, huh? You won't always be able to hold on to this because you may have you know, a dozen databases with a dozen log lines on there. So they won't all be able to be L, but for right now, we're going to do it this way. So double click on that. L dash user logs. This one down here is user DBs and it is G. Sure. Why not? I'll leave it at G. I'll say G dash user DBs. Number five is system DBs on F. Sure, I've got no problem with that. So let's just make this F, not F colon, F dash system DBs. There we go. And the last one is DTC. Perfect. And it is J. Ah, I got no problem with that either. So let's make that J dash DTC. Perfect. There we go. So now we've got our guys renamed and you can see how much easier it is to tell which disk you're dealing with and not have to cycle through every single one of them just to, just to find the disk that you want. It's easy enough here, but if you have dozens of disks and I've been on plenty of clusters that had dozens, if not hundreds of disks in them. So while that's easy enough here, when you get to some of the larger setups, it's going to be really hard to find out which disk is which. And it's really laborious to have to search through every single one of them just to find the disk you want. If you've got multiple instances, then you could do something like F dash instance name dash system DBs, right? So that way you can easily find the instance that you're interested in too, or you can do instance name first and then drive letter and then the the function so it would be you know instance one dash f dash system dbs so that you always have all of your instance one stuff together when you sort it by name right and then you ha always have your your instance one your instance two your instance three you always have those grouped together and then you can go down by drive letter that way so always try to organize these guys in 
very logical chunks. Assume you're going to have a hundred of them and you're going to need to search through them all. It's a really good idea to set things up like this. Okay, so we've got our disks in there. Let's test a failover real quick just to see if these guys can fail over properly. So I'm going to go to move available storage and I'm going to say best possible node. They should all come up very quickly. You notice how every single one of them failed over except for the quorum. That's because the quorum drive lives with the cluster and all we did was move the nodes over. I mean, not the nodes, the disks. All we did was move the disks over to another node. We didn't move the cluster itself, which brings up a question of what is this whole failover thing and what does it mean and how do I control it? We're gonna talk about that soon. I'm gonna talk about that after I install SQL because then we'll have something more to talk about. I can show you more stuff after SQL gets installed. So we are going to have a nice talk about failover and what it all means. But right now, just know that we moved the disks from one server to another server, but not the quorum. The quorum stayed where it was. And I can even do this again, best possible node. There's only two nodes, so it's going to move it back to two. And when I do it again, it's going to move everything back to one except the quorum. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm, I'll explain that later, but right now we are ready to install SQL. There's nothing else we have to do except install the SQL prereq of .NET. We're gonna do that next and install SQL, but first it's a really good time to take a snapshot of all of our VMs, because now we've got, we're ready for the cluster. I mean, ready for SQL. There we go. Take a snapshot. Come here, take another snapshot. Ready for SQL, and I'm even going to say installed disks renamed. I'm going to copy that. So I like my nodes to have the exact same name on their snapshots so I know exactly which one goes with which. Ready for SQL. There we go. Take the snapshot. Perfect. Now we're ready to install SQL and we're going to do that next.